YouTube, back at it. We're doing our 40 foot container ship by Tamaya, or container trailer by Tamaya. This video, we're doing step 15, which is attaching the gooseneck assembly and the legs. I've already done one leg here and started assembling the gooseneck portion. Um, my kit. has these countersunk Phillips and they're actually bad um, I can't get a driver to go into them to actually screw them down um, you can see, let me pull it up you can see that I've chewed that one all up trying to get it to go in so I don't know what that's all about. That's kind of goofy and a little annoying. So I did that one off frame. Um, I've got to deal with four more of them yet. Uh, they go in the underside. But first let's put this, this guy in. Which is our uh, Q4. And this is the... the part we built in our last video when we were building the legs it's your J5, H3, and J4 assembly there's going to be a piece of uh, fake diamond plate over this to cover your whole um, let me pull it in the frame so you can see what I'm talking about this piece here so you can, fake diamond plate so you can cover this hole and um, make it clean looking this hole is where your light kit would normally come through so, let's go ahead and put this part in. It goes underneath. And just lines up with these two holes here. Um, and then inside this part, there's four holes, you just line up with the back two holes and make sure you put this side with the lip towards the back and that's your gooseneck portion will actually fit in Alrighty. that goes in with um BA8, which are your self tappers here. Get it started. Seem to have misplaced my screwdriver somewhere. So, that's kind of annoying. Aha! Right where it belongs. Put away. Where I'll never find it, right? So, get this part screwed in. The two self-tapping plastic screws alrighty so once you got those two parts in flip your trailer over set it down. This is where your gooseneck comes in. Now your gooseneck has two holes here, one hole here, two holes here. So the side with three holes goes towards the back because you're going to mount a piece into that third hole. So you just got to make sure you get them mounted in the back. Oh, I built that wrong. Let me, uh, I built that upside down and 
Didn't even realize they'd done it. So there's holes for the self, the uh, countersunk on one side, and not on the other side, obviously. And I built it with the countersunk going the wrong direction. Easy fix. I'm only human, right? So, set that plate in. Grab our screws that are most definitely wrong. Cut wrong, machined wrong, or something. Get the going in if you can. I said mine are definitely wrong. I'm not going to work. Give me a second. Let me uh, get these in, and uh, we'll have to find a different tool. So give me a second, guys. Alrighty, guys, I'm back. Um, what I ended up having to do is breaking my own rule. I had to use a drill. Uh, that was so I could get some enough pressure going down. Just make sure you're careful when you're doing it that way, so you don't uh, rip the threads out of the plastic. So, anyway, we've got that part in. Now we're going to go ahead and attach our trailer release mechanism in. This part goes in with a BC3 way out down here with a nut, um, a Loctite nut of the thin variety. Yeah, if I can find that. So it goes in with that guy. There's actually two different style lock nuts in here. Um, you got a thin one and a tall one. So it goes in with the thin one. So it goes in with your BC3, which is your long countersunk. Just goes through like that. We'll start the lock nut so we can flip it over and secure that. But first let's get our other countersunk which is um, where was it? BC5 and that's going to be a 3 by 18 countersunk. Is this guy here and it just goes through and it goes on with a flange nut on this one so put the flange nut on and in here we're going to put a BA6 which is just a big long a longer version of the self tapping uh, Phillips screw, non countersunk. So put that in real quick so we can flip the trailer over without worrying about too many parts flopping around. So this, this one using the flange nut they call for Loctite. Grab that real quick. So just a dab of Loctite on the threads, and I throw everything onto the ground. So. Like I said, with the flange nuts, I don't really ever have to use the driver they provided, the the way but you definitely will have to with the um, the uh, nylock nut it's gonna be interesting because it's in a spot you can't get the driver into it
Alrighty. Alrighty. So, now that we've done that, we're going to secure the back half on. And one second to arrange the parts for that, the piece that goes here. One second, I'll be right back, guys. Alright, we're back. So, to get this part in, you need these two little ring guys here. They're plastic washers out of the cube parts tree. They just go into the two holes on your release mechanism. And then your release... Uh, what is this thing called? Your release lever just sits in like this and it's going to sit down in the hole like this and you take this plate which is Q7 and put it on it's very spe specific in the picture it shows that Q7 has a couple little nubs and the nubs go to the front of the trailer so what we'll do is we'll set this in place Put a countersunk screw, which is your BC4. It's a 3 by 23 uh, countersunk head. Get it all lined up. Set this guy in place. Like so. Make sure your arms, make sure when you push it, it moves the arms, which it does. And that goes on with a flange nut. This is your BA-10, so just a little Loctite, and a flange nut, let's get it down tight enough to, so the parts don't wiggle around and we'll do the other side. you have that piece in. Again, just a little Loctite. Alright, and another flange nut. Make them nice and tight. Like so. Alrighty, so that's how that release mechanism goes. We'll just pop on our arm. There's always a little bit of a fun trick. I just use a pair of channel locks. Um, it's the best way that I find to do it. Like so. Like so. Now when you back your trailer in, you hit this little lever here, which then pushes back on this guy, which releases your, your leg. So that's how it's done. So we'll do, um, step 16 is showing you how to do the motorized one. Um, I don't have the motorized one, so we're not going to do that video. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. We're just going to finish up by putting on our second leg, which has been relocated by me. So, one second to find my second leg, and we'll be right back. Hold on. Alrighty, found it. It just fell off the back side of my table. So, the leg goes on with four of these BC1s, if I remember right. Yep, BC1s. I only have three. The kit says it only it comes with four. 
I've looked the whole kit over. I haven't used one in the wrong spot, so I think I got shorted one. No big deal. I'll just go buy a new set. But it uses four or four of them normally. I'm going to only do three. It uses four flange nuts. So, as always with flange nuts, you got a Loctite. So. Now that I've relocated my Loctite too. Anyway, no no harm, no foul. That just kind of sits in there. Again, make sure your your release mechanism hits it. So we'll just put one screw in, put another screw in so it stays put. Put our flange nut on. Of course, you want to Loctite it. All right, put our last one in. Um, on our next video, I'll show you how to do the animal guards, which is this aluminum part, or plastic, fake aluminum looking part. There's a Loctite. Um, so I'll show you how to do that one in the next video. And uh, I'll show you how to put on the spare tire hold down and your uh, chalk, your wheel chalks on the next video. So uh, while I fight with this last little screw, just remember to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know how I'm doing, guys. And uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. Um, I've really been getting good questions, and I, I like them. So keep asking. Anyway, uh, Speedy Mix, signing off.